Hello, this is Faith at Faith and Books, and I'm going to do a Friday Reads. Um, just an update on COVID with my youngest sister who is Down syndrome so far. She's not showing any symptoms, except last night her temperature was slightly elevated, and she was tired. She was really tired, which was concerning, but it was, it was still within the normal range. It was just high for her. And she does sometimes have tired days, so we didn't know what to to make of it. So we're gonna every night we've been having a um, a Google Meets um, video call with the caretaker. Um, so we'll find out tonight. But it's really I mean I really felt like it was miraculous that she had tested positive and wasn't exhibiting any uh, symptoms. She uh, her her. Um, Quarantine is officially up on Monday. Then they're going to retest her. So we'll see. So I'm just praying that it doesn't, the news tonight is good. Uh, we've, we've been uh, talking at six every night. The other concerning thing, and we still haven't heard, is that both my father in law is 87 and his lady friend that he uh, lives with, who's about the same age, I'm not sure, maybe she's a couple years younger, they both have colds. They moved into an assistant living floor of her their retirement home where two people had passed away of COVID and they have colds. Somehow they got colds and they were under quarantine. So how did that happen? How do they get colds? I don't know. But they got tested and we're hoping to hear either today or tomorrow. That would be devastating. I mean, because they're really fragile health-wise anyway because they're elderly. Uh, so anyway... So uh, COVID is just hovering over us right now. It's a little bit depressing. And it's a, a very rainy, gloomy day. I mean, it's so dark and gloomy, I can barely keep my eyes open. But anyway, but other than that, things are going well. Um, I am reading Winter Holiday. Of course, I'm, as usual, I'm being a really slow reader. But it's just delightful. The kids are on holiday, the walkers and the... Um, What's their last name? Blackets? Blackets? Blackets are um, are holidaying um, at the lake where they in the summer where they're usually camping and sailing. And uh, they it's really told though more from the point of view of these two other children who have come to spend a week with their mother's old nurse, Mrs. Dixon, who was a character from the other books, and um, the first two books. And uh, Dorothea and Dick are their name. And uh, it's just lovely. It's really lovely. There's one, I wanted to read it. Maybe when I finally finish it, I'll, I'll read it. But there's just one part really early in the book where Dick is, he's very um, taken with astronomy. And he's really into studying the stars. And they've, they've dubbed this one outbuilding an observatory. And that they're going to go out at night and observe. He's got a telescope. And, um, and he has this ascetic experience or whatever it is that, that that experience you have where you suddenly realize the magnificence and the unthinkable hugeness of the universe and that you're just this tiny thing within it and yet you feel this thrill of joy because of that it's just so well described you know and it's 11 year old boy or whatever experiencing that um and another thing that was really interesting in this book is um nancy gets the mumps and so they all are quarantined. They can't go back to, uh, quarantine is just like the word of the week. Um, they can't go back to school yet because you have to sign, apparently this is England, right? Back in the, I don't know when this was, uh, 20s. You had to sign a paper saying that you hadn't been exposed to any infectious diseases. I guess because they all went to boarding schools. Maybe that's why they did that. But anyway, so they can't, they've been exposed to mumps and poor Nancy has the mumps and is terribly ill. Um, but nobody seems worried about her. Um, but anyway, it extends their holiday, so they get to go on this great adventure to what they have dubbed the North Pole. Um, and they're waiting for the lake to freeze over, and they're really they're skating. They're really into skating and pretending they um, have a they have a sledge, what they call a sledge, which we don't call it a sledge here. We call them a sled or a sleigh. And um, and they pretend they take turns being the the dogs that pull the sledge. Um, 
Now, what was I going to say? Something about, oh, yeah, so it was months in quarantine. And then I'm also reading this book out loud, um, The Adventures of Happy Jack by Thornton Burgess. Um, and Dover, Dover uh, Children's Surf Classics, um, publishes tons of these. He wrote so many of them. And the, the five-year-old's really enjoying it. And um, it, Mumps features in this, too. So both of these, so at the same time, I'm reading about Mumps in this. This was published in 1915, and this was published in 1933 or something. Um, so Mumps used to really figure heavily in people's lives. Yeah, 1933, um, in their childhoods, I guess, because two, two children's books and it showed up. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting coincidence. I think I had mumps when I, because I think the, when did the uh, uh, vaccine come out? I think it came out like in my early childhood, but I think I had already had it. I remember that because I was the only person that was allowed to go play with this girl up the street who got it because my mother said, oh, she's already had mumps. She can go play with her. So I remember that. Um, anyway, so uh, we're enjoying, so this is wonderful. I'm, I'm enjoying it very much. And this is wonderful as well. This is such a cute story. Um, what's really charming about it is every chapter opens with this wise saying by the squirrel, Happy Jack, who in reality isn't so very wise. But um, it's just a really wonderful tale about uh, the squirrel. So we're really enjoying it. Okay, so... Uh, so we have to get finished with that because I got two books that I've had on hold at the library for a couple of, I don't know, it's probably going on a month I had them on hold. I mean, I had a request for a hold and then they came, they had them available. This one is called Zoe and Sassafras, Dragons and Marshmallows. And um, I just got these yesterday. I just picked them up at the library. And it looks really good. It re looks really good. It, now, I was going to do this uh, unit study on dragons, but he's gone off into squirrels, so we're not really doing it. We're still doing squirrels. We've been doing squirrels loosely for weeks now. Um, but I, and I didn't quite know what this was. I just sort of was researching on the library website and, and picked it. But it's, she's interested in dragons, and then from there, she goes into dinosaurs and reptiles. And there's even experiments and things you can do. So I think this is going to be fun. And it seems like it's just the right level for reading out loud to the guy. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's all about um, doing these cute little experiments and stuff. So this might be really fun. Uh, I was, I'm impressed by this book. And then the other one that I had on hold that I requested is this one, which I remember reading as a child. When did this come out? 1956. So I remember reading this as a child, and I remember reading it to my own kids. The Enormous Egg by Oliver Butterworth about a boy who finds this big egg, and it turns out to be a triceratops. You can see the little baby triceratops. So I thought that the five-year-old would enjoy this as a read-out. So we have to get through Happy Jack, and then we're going to see which one of these we're going to start on next. Um, and then I try to, you know, it's Advent. We've been lighting the Advent wreath at night. I keep forgetting to do the Jesse Tree stories. I got this book out, which I bought, and I don't think I ever really used for my own kids. So I got it out, but it's slightly too old for him. It's kind of, it's a retelling of all the Bible stories in the Jesse Tree. So if you don't know what a Jesse Tree is, it's, you get a tree. I used to put up a piece of paper, a big, like, poster board, and just draw the outline of a evergreen tree and then you can find online uh, um, symbols you can print out and you cut them out and you color them and it just tells the biblical story up to the time of Christ so from Adam and Eve to to Christ's birth and uh, and you do it all through Advent and the thing is I I, I just don't remember to keep it up <laughs> so I would start it and then I would never finish it so I got this book at some point um, but unfortunately, even though it's, it seems like a really lovely book and a nice retelling, it's for slightly older children and it's just not, it's just not doing it for him. So I think I'll give up on, on that one or I might still have it out at the table and we can glance at it, but I'm not going to use it as a definite read aloud. Um, so let's see what else. Oh, so, um, 
I started reading Fratelli Tutti, which is the encyclical uh, that just came out from Pope Francis on fraternity and social friendship. And it's really, uh, it's really, what's the word I want, significant for, for right now, because he's like, he's just about to go into pandemics and um, just the effect, how, how COVID, the global crisis of COVID really brought to the fore what's wrong with our current um, society, our, our economy, our, our international relationships, our, our, um, our whole way of living, and how fragile it actually is, and how it's based on things that really don't address human flourishing. And so he wants to, I've heard about something called the Great Reset. I'm not quite sure what that is. I think it's more of an economic thing, and I don't know if it's coming from the left or the right. I don't even know what it is. But I heard the phrase after I had started reading this, and I thought, well, he's kind of talking about this. Like, this should be our wake-up call, and we should try to make things better. Um, and and this is his vision of how to do that. So it's it's already really compelling. I keep I'm underlining things and really trying to, um, yeah... I'm really trying to absorb what he's saying, and I'm enjoying it very much. Uh, and I'm reading it more slowly than I thought I would. In fact, right after this, I might read a little bit of it. And I'm also rereading this, and I just read chapter five, which is a really good chapter, I thought. It's about race in America, about how Christians should approach uh, racism in uh, in America. And it's written, you know, from the point of view of pretty much the Baptist Church, which is heavily African American, so two out of the three authors are African American, and I thought it was incredibly wise and practical, and um, uh, I thought it was a really good chapter, so I enjoyed rereading that. I don't know, we might kind of stall out on this for now, because poor Linda Joe and if Linda, if you're seeing this, I'm so sorry, and I hope you get things settled, but she's you know, she's homeless because of the fire. Um, I forget what they called that particular fire. Um, but anyway, and so she's she's having trouble. She's basically homeless right now. So she's trying to keep up, but it's hard. And, and my other friend, Kathy, who's in on it, is also kind of distracted by health issues and, and other stuff going on in her life. So it might not be that we'll get through this at, at a great pace, but it's so worth it reading. It really, really is, and I highly, highly recommend it. And then the other thing, which kind of goes along with the, um, with uh, Pope Francis <laughs> and uh, trying to re-envision how we relate to each other, and I also think the permaculture book ties into this too. Everything's tying together. It's weird. I got two books on mumps <laughs> and quarantines, and, uh, and then these, I'm reading this stuff about how we should rethink our, the way we approach things like our food and our social relationships. And one thing I did really recently was join a Buy Nothing project group, which I had heard about from my daughter. She's been in one for a couple of years, I think, but I had never bothered. And so I finally joined just, I don't know, a couple months ago. It's lovely. I love the whole ethic of it. It's, it's about being neighborly and and helping each other out and if you have abundance if you have something that you don't need anymore just putting the word out there does anybody want this and and vice versa you can you can ask for things if you need a particular thing and you just can't get a hold of it or you can't afford it right now or you just you know it's not something you can spend money on and it's such a friendly group and such a heartening experience being in this group and I'm actually in training because they want they like to make it hyper local and so the group that I'm in has already grown too big so um so I think I might be learning to be the this will happen in a few months it's not gonna happen right away be the um the administrator they do it through Facebook uh, of the you know a, a section once they break off um so, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really, really impressed in it. It's really heartwarming to, and it's mostly women. What is it? I don't know. It's women being neighborly to other women. And something really beautiful happened this week. Um, the woman who runs it put out a, 
a message saying, does anybody have extra food? We have a neighbor who is really struggling to put, I guess, COVID and stuff. It's really struggling to put food on the table for her and her son. And all these people responded. It was beautiful. Um, so it's just, it's a really good group. And somebody put out a, um, uh, I don't know what to call it, a post uh, that they had these uh, kids games that they wanted to give away. And so I thought, well, the five-year-old loves to play games. So I got this one from, and this is a neighbor that I, I've dr driven by her house a million times, just right down the road from me. I never knew she was there, and now I know about her. You know, I know of her in life, of her, you know, her kid's old game. And it's a really, we played it to, today, and it was, it's a really fun, silly game. So I really enjoy it. So anyway, I'm really, so if you have a Buy Nothing project group near you, or if you want to start a really um, positive, group that uh, where you where it really cultivates neighborliness and um, a sense of community um, I, I highly recommend it I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful idea so uh, it restores my faith in humanity so that's it that's my Friday reads it's not all about reading but um, yeah so now I'm gonna go read my Fratelli Tutti for a couple of pages probably doze off for a few minutes and then I think I'm gonna go take a shower I'm going to go resume my babysitting duties downstairs. My 21-year-old son, who just had two exams today, um, is uh, down there with him. I think they're watching TV. Anyway, all right, so you take care and happy Advent if you so celebrate, and I'll talk to you later. Oh, and you know, I don't think I'm going to post next week because it's a really, really busy week. I've got, we've got, uh, it's the week my church does the hypothermia shelter, and so we have to, they're, they're doing it really differently this year, but it's going to be providing lots and lots of food. I'm going to be taken up with that. And then it's also this environmental meeting that we're having for my, with my diocese. And then we have St. Nick's Day and we have, oh, the, uh, the five-year-old is starting a little online French class. And I mean, there's just a bunch of stuff going on. And I'm so easy to derail <laughs> when it comes to fast read or reading. Um, even though I try, I plug along, but I'm just really slow. I just know it's gonna be the type of week that I'm just not gonna, Hanukkah starts. Um, I'm just not gonna be. And who knows about my sister or my in-laws? Who knows what's gonna happen with them? God, please. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna be posting next week. So. Take care. Uh, I hope you're well, and I'll see you in a little while. Bye.